everyone! Welcome to another video of Tiny DIYs. For this episode, I just wanted to walk you through how I made dust covers for my craft machine and my craft cart, which as you can see in this video, I assembled on my own. If you want to go straight to the dust cover tutorials, you can skip this part. I made different types of dust covers, one for my craft machine, another for its oversized cutting mat, and finally for this cart I am working on. So I bought this cart for around $20 from a shopping app. I actually wanted one that had steel trays and was foldable but it was twice the cost so I ended up getting this one. In case you decide to buy one, it comes with a simple manual, enough screws for the rods, and a small screwdriver and a wrench. As you can see here, I had a bit of a workout trying to drive the screws into the rods, but I managed to assemble all of it. I did ruin the screwdriver. Good thing we had another one I could use. After sweating it out, attaching the cart handle and the wheels, I had my own multi-layer craft cart, which I of course filled with some of my craft stuff such as sewing machine and lots of yarn and resin material. Now on to the main topic of this video, how to make dust covers. Let me start by showing off my fabric. Originally, I wanted to make clothes out of this, but when it got delivered, I didn't quite like the feel of the fabric. This is what you would call a herringbone pattern, which you probably associate with tiles. I figured it would look nice if I made matching dust covers using it. I'll start with a dust cover for my Silhouette Curio. So the Curio is a very versatile craft machine because in addition to cutting, it can emboss, etch, and sketch. But because I don't really use my craft machine daily, I think it would be best to make a dust cover for it. This will be fairly simple. I just need one piece of fabric to cover it on all sides except the bottom. So I measured the combined length and the combined width of the surfaces. Once I have that, I mark the measurement using my dermatograph with a bit of excess fabric for the hems. And then I start cutting. So that's just about enough fabric. As you can see, if you place the fabric like this, it would look like you're wrapping a gift. But instead of folding these excess triangles at the end, we're going to sew them in and cut them off. So I estimate around 5 to 6 inches from the edge. So with the wrong side of the fabric facing up, I mark around 5 inches and then fold the fabric at the corner so the two adjacent edges meet. Measuring 5 inches at the bottom, I mark my perpendicular line. I do this again for the other corners and use pins to secure the corners. I flip the fabric inside out and place it over the machine to see the fit. It still looks quite loose so I cut off more excess fabric and then I adjust my corners accordingly. I ended up going for 6 inches but that was too tight. So I adjusted it to 5.5 inches. That looked perfect to me so I turned on my sewing machine and started straight stitching the lines to secure the corners. I do that to the other corners. Once done, I cut off the excess fabric from the corners. I now shift a zigzag stitch and finish the raw edges using my sewing machine. The last step is to double hem the edges. You can press your fabric but because I don't like using the iron, I use my hands and some pins to temporarily hold the hem. And now all you have to do is use the straight stitch to secure the hem. I promise to show you the finished version at the end of this video. So this is the large cutting mat for my Silhouette Curio. It doesn't fit in any of my craft bins, so I have to make a separate dust cover for it. This version is much easier, just imagine you're making a pillowcase. You could trace the mat on the fabric or allot some excess for the seams. One or two inches of excess fabric would be safe enough. So we're going to have one long rectangular piece of fabric that will just sew on the side and the bottom. I am again using the fabric pattern as a guide to make sure my lines are straight and I mark it with my trusty dermatograph or grease pencil. You can buy this from an art store and it's so much easier to use than chalk. I'm just not sure if it completely washes off so better use it on the insides of the fabric. I cut using the marked lines as my guide. And I know it would be much easier with a rotary cutter but I haven't bought one yet. In the meantime, I am using really sharp fabric shears. I repeat the process for each side. Before we start sewing, let's just make sure the cutting mat fits. I'm happy with that so I go back to my fabric and this time mark where I will sew. After marking, I use safety pins to secure the fabric together. 
You probably use regular pins, but mine haven't arrived yet. You can tell how much of a newbie I am in sewing, but I am starting to complete my sewing kit, so don't worry. Now that we have one side pinned, I use my sewing machine to run a straight stitch along my guidelines. Without raising my needle, I shift the fabric so I can sew along the adjacent side. I have been sewing for just a few months now, and these kinds of projects really help me practice and just improve my sewing skills. And every time I sew a straight line, I just feel so accomplished. Now that we have done that, let me just make sure it fits the mat. It's perfect! So now it's time to cut off the excess fabric. And then we'll finish the raw edges using a zigzag stitch. Always works well for me. After that, we'll work on our opening. It's going to be very simple, just something you'll tuck in. No zipper or buttons or anything, just clean hemming at the edge. So I fold it up, secure with pins, and then run a straight stitch around the whole top. And because I want it to look extra neat, I decided to fold it again so I can have a double fold hem. It's simple, clean, and easy. Here's what the dust cover looks like. Now we go back to my craft cart. So for the cart dust cover, I plan to use just one big rectangular piece of fabric to wrap around the sides and then one small rectangular piece for the top. I first measure the sides, so the height, the width, and the length. I make sure to allot enough fabric for the handlebar and my sewing machine at the top. Once done, I start making the measurements on my fabric. I again use the pattern to make sure my lines are straight. After I cut out the large rectangle, I work on the smaller one. Now that I'm back on my desk, I start marking my sims for the fabric that will wrap around the cart. After cutting off some excess fabric, I secure them with pins. And then I just use a straight stitch to attach the two edges together. I just remove the pins as I stitch, making sure that the lines are straight and the fabric beneath doesn't get misaligned. With that done, I move on to the smaller rectangle for the top. I mark the margins. These are where I will attach the bigger fabric. I didn't quite make exact measurements, so I ended up placing the dust cover body around the cart to see how I can properly attach the top. It also made it easier to attach the pins while making sure that the top and the side fabrics are aligned. As expected, I needed to make some adjustments and I ended up cutting off some excess fabric at the top. After that though, I managed to pin all the sides together. Once done, I bring the fabric back to the sewing machine and run a straight stitch through all the seams. It was a bit hard getting to the corners because the fabric beneath was not flat, but with some careful maneuvering, I was able to finish the top. Now that the hard part is over, I can cut off the excess fabric at the seams. I go back to my sewing machine, switch to a zigzag stitch, and secure all those raw edges. Finally, I double fold the edges to finish off the hems. After one last round of straight stitch, I am finally done. It was so satisfying to see the dust cover fit on the cart. It's loose enough to accommodate the extra height or width that it might need as I continue to grow my craft collection. Now here are my matching dust covers. I hope you enjoyed this video. If this is your second time to visit my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and tap that bell icon to turn on your notifications so you can catch my next DIY videos. Bye!